Hey YouTubers, today we have an LG washing machine. This is actually the LG washer dryer and it has an unusual symptom dealing with the selector dial. So if we power it on, we see the lights come up around. We are missing a couple of the lights are not coming on, but the other problem is when we go to turn the selector switch, you should see a light line up with whatever you're trying to get, like you're trying to get to the delicate cycle. When you turn it, it should go toward the delicate cycle. In this one, there's no response. So it's an easy way to fix this. First, we have to remove this dial, and then we're just gonna squirt in some contact cleaner that should do the trick. So we'll get right to it. And in the meantime, could you press the subscribe button below and we can send you a lot more videos each week uh, you also have to press the little bell button and that'll notify you when we have a new video. And let's get right to it. So after you unplug it, the next thing to get to this knob to pull this off, we're going to have to remove a couple of things. Um, on some models, you can pull really hard and this will come off. And on other models, you have to get this cover off first and then the dial will come right off. So to get the cover off, we're going to come in here, we'll press this push button, and that's going to allow us to remove the drawer. And then we're going to just take out a couple of Phillips head screws here, and we have to remove the top, and then we're going to be able to get this plate off. And we have to remove the controller behind it, and that'll then allow us to pop that off. So we need to take this top panel off, and there's just two Phillips head screws one in each corner that we have to pull out, and we can get that off pretty easily. So let's zip those out. There's one, number two. All right, now what we can do is pull back a little bit on the lid. We're gonna go back by about a quarter inch, and now we should be able to lift up here in the back, and then we should be able to lift the front off, get this lid off. There we go. Okay, that's good. We don't have to go about that far. And we need to get out a couple of Phillips head screws here and here that are holding on that panel. We're also going to remove a couple from the front. We'll get out this one here, a little Phillips head screw. Okay, we'll get out that one. All right. And we should be able to get that panel off pretty easily. Then we can get the knob off. Once we get the knob off, we're gonna spray in some electrical cleaner and that should bring that function back. So here we are on the front. We're gonna get out this little Phillips head screw. This one, so these are a little bit longer. Okay, I'm gonna lift in right here, get this panel to come off. Come over here, do the same thing. Okay, so I'm gonna lift up. See, this is attached by a little wire here. We'll go ahead and set this down for a sec. And I wanna get out this panel, so I want to remove that screw, that screw, that screw, that screw, and that screw, just Phillips head screws. So let's do that next. Okay, got all the screws out. Last one here. There we go. We should be able to get this panel out now. Just lift up, let's get that out. Okay, that out. And there's our knob right there. We can just pull the knob off at this point. So we're going to spray our electrical cleaner in on that little switch assembly right there. And covering that was this assembly. And then covering that was the knob. So we pulled the knob off, then that one. And now we have access to that where we can spray our cleaner. All right, so we just pulled off those two modular connectors, one there, one there. 
So we're hooked up there, and that's going to let us work on this module a little bit. So here's that little circuit board. I took it off from its case. I noticed that some of the LED lights were not coming on before. It could be that these LED bulbs have just gone out. And I know that it wouldn't be difficult to just melt the solder and then just put in some new LED bulbs, solder them back. Or I can just buy this new board, I bet it's pretty cheap. But first thing I'll try today is just cleaning up the switch with some electrical cleaner. Okay guys, so this is the circuit board. This is a little switch that we can turn by hand. You can hear it click. And it was just having trouble. It wasn't really responding when you would turn the dial. So we are going to use some contact cleaner. We'll put a little link in the description below for this stuff. And good, maybe wear safety glasses. So we're gonna squirt in here to the switch. And then what we'll do is turn it also a few clicks. Kind of spreads the stuff around inside. We'll spray it again. This stuff evaporates really quick. Feels like it's spinning better, I think. While you have this board open, let's also spray into this area here and here where the modular connectors go in. Okay, very good. And then we'll give it a, we'll give it a try. So you guys will notice that on this model, this knob, if we put it back inside this fascia, this hole, it gets caught right here. So if you did, if you didn't do the disassembly that we did and just try to pull this knob, it wouldn't come out because it's being kept in here by this control panel. It, it's not able to go through this way. It can go the other way, but it gets too thick at its base and it would be impossible to get this out unless you end up breaking this plastic. There are some models though where you can get this off. I think the difference would be when you look at those models, you would see that there's a little gap, even though this is on its stem, there's a little gap there that you could get a screwdriver behind. And in this model, you do have to remove the pieces that we did already. So we're gonna put it back together now that it's clean and see if there's any, any change. All right, we got the circuit board back in its case. We put on this cover first, and then we've got the knob on. If we turn it, we can hear it clicking. So we know it's engaging, we know, we know it's working. So we'll put it back together. We're gonna to put the um, modular connections from the other piece back in, and we'll add the screws, and then we'll go to the next step. So hopefully this will, this will do the trick. While I've got this open, I'm gonna spray these connectors too. There we go. Okay, I just got those two connectors back in. I got my knob back in. Put that back through the fascia and then add the screws in and we'll do the next piece. So we got the panel back on, we clicked it in here, we clicked it in here. And now we have to add a couple of screws here and here and then a couple on the back and give it a test. So remember, these are the longer stainless steel screws, a little bit longer than the other ones. I zip those in. That one. And that one. Got it. All right, we're going to plug it in and see if there's any difference now with that selector switch. If not, you can just get, you need to get a new module. Let's try it out. All right, so uh, power. So we're still missing that LED, that LED and two down here, one here. But that might just be a matter of soldering a new LEDs or getting that new module. We still don't have our selector switch. You hear it clicking, 
but it's not changing anything. So if you still have that selector switch acting as it should after cleaning it, we can just replace this piece right here. We'll put a link in the description below. And it's really easy, just remove those screws, take out the two modular connectors, and take the knob off, pop it on the new one, put the connectors back, put the screws back, and you'd be all set. And you'll get all of your LED lights back, and you get all of your selector switch functions back on. You have not all of the lights light up, most of them, but not all of them. And when you turn this, you don't get any action. You can hear it clicking, but no action. We got a new module for it. We're going to try that out today. So we're going to unplug it. And we're just going to take out all of these Phillips head screws. So we can get this module out and try a different one. Besides getting out those screws, you also want to disconnect this one. So we're going to just lift up that prong and then we can separate these, pull these apart and this will come out toward the front like that. So just get those screws out. We got that disconnected. We got all the screws out. We'll go and lift out the old module and from the front of it, we're going to pull this knob off wiggle and pull. That comes off too. Okay, let's put the new one on now. So this is the old module that had the burned out, a couple of burned out LED lights and also did not have a functioning switch here. Let's try the other one. Okay, here's our new part. Here's our knob. It has a of a half moon shape. We look on the stem, that half moon shape, the moon's pointing up. So we're going to match that and put this knob back on. We have to kind of wiggle it on. Push it down as far as we'll go. Okay, we're going to flip this over. Feed these into position and we're going to add those screws back. Yep. I'm just going to add those Phillips head screws. Okay, we got it all hooked up. The new module. Let's see if there's an improvement. We're going to turn it on. Oh, that's good. We got all the lights. Yeah, and we have control. Very good. Okay, so we're back in business. <clears throat> so this is the part that stopped working and I would imagine between these two that this is probably the one that burned out. It looks like you probably just get these two as a unit but if I had to guess I'd say that this one is having the trouble some of the LEDs had burned out and the selector switch had burned out so you were in a pinch what you could do is go to the electronics store and warm up the solder at these joints, pull this switch off and just try to match the switch. And then uh, find out which LEDs have burned out, warm up the solder, pull them off, put new LEDs, and you'd probably be good, probably for pretty cheap. So this new part used on eBay was about 90, but with parts of probably at about $15, you could get this module working again. Watching our video and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance. And also click the little bell notification button so we can send you uh, weekly videos on all the different ways of fixing appliances around your home and saving you lots of money. So thanks again for watching and please also press the like button for our video if this was helpful to you. Feel free to contact me at the email listed below which has got the fixitguy at yahoo.com.